Hi everybody, hope you're doing well on this uh, utterly miserable uh, Tuesday morning. See the rain uh, coming out my window just now. But hope you're, you're coping well. Just want to share with you a wee thought from God's Word, reading from the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 12. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's speaking about the church and how the church is to operate together, the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12 says this, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. We were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. The last few while, as we've been getting used to doing these online services the last few months, uh, the praise band and the musicians within the church have been uh, figuring out how to uh, record music and put these music videos uh, that hopefully you've seen in our services, putting them uh, online. And it's been uh, an enjoyable, usually an enjoyable experience as we've been getting to grips with this technology. And what would usually happen throughout the week is that we, we have a, a drive where we upload all our separate parts of the hymns to so that everyone can access uh, the songs. And so what would usually happen throughout the week is someone would record their part, be it a vocal part or a, a guitar part or a piano part or whatever, and they'd uh, upload it to the drive so that everyone can see, and they'd send a message to a little messenger group that we've got going just now. And they would say something like, that's me uploaded my part for this weekend's hymns. But then what would very often happen is they would say something like, it doesn't sound very good. It sounds rubbish. So if you want to ditch it and not use it for the, the hymn, that's fine, because it doesn't seem very good. That's what happens quite often. Then the rest of us can go on and hear the, the recording ourselves and see what kind of job they've done. And very often, it doesn't sound that impressive. And that includes the guitarist, by the way. It doesn't sound that impressive on its own. And you think, well, there's not a great deal we can do with this. How's this going to be used for a song? But when you get to the end of the week and all the parts have been recorded and you put them all together in one piece and you hear it all together, it can be quite a pleasantly surprising experience to think, actually, do you know what? This works. It actually sounds all right when mixed together with all the other instruments and the vocals. On its own, neither instrument or vocal sounds that impressive, but when put together, it all seems to complement one another and produces, usually, a quite nice sound. Because in music, there is something wonderful about a diversity of different instruments playing the same song in a different way, on a different instrument, using a different method and all the rest of it, but playing the same song. And when it comes together, it produces, usually, hopefully, on a good day, something quite beautiful. Things on their own are not that impressive, but together it makes something great. When the Apostle Paul is writing to this church here in Corinth, which is a chaotic church as we know, uh, a church with, with all sorts of problems going on within it, he wants to write to them to encourage them and to encourage them to strive towards unity, but not merely unity for unity's sake. But he's encouraging them to strive to, towards unity amidst their diversity. 
It's not a unity for unity's sake. It's unity for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the name of Jesus Christ. It's not a unity that means all of them are exactly the same in everything they do and they all have the same gifts and do everything in the same way. That's not what he's calling them to. The unity is based in Christ, but it involves a diversity of different types of people who can do different types of things, who have been blessed with different types of gifts. So that when they come together, they form, and he's very deliberate with this, this imagery he uses here, they form a body. And we all know any body part on its own, regardless of how talented it is and regardless of what great things it can do, on its own, it's not really up to much. It can't do a great deal. No matter what gifts it has, it is still massively dependent on the rest of the body to complement it, to encourage it, to help each other put each different part out. And that's a picture we're given of the church of Jesus Christ. A unity within diversity. A unity of people who are one in Jesus Christ, but who are different in so many, many different ways and have gifts in different ways and are different people in many different ways. The last few months we've been trying to cope as a church and trying to learn amidst this really phenomenal period just now, unlike maybe anything that the church has experienced to this degree in 2000 years. We've been learning how to cope as a church, how to be the church in a pandemic. And it's been a very strange experience as all the normal stuff seems to have been stripped away from us. We've learned how to do Sunday mornings differently with pre-recorded services and watching them at home in our pyjamas, probably for most of you. And learning how to use our gifts differently. Maybe you're used to serving in the church in a particular way, maybe with the people within the community or, or with young people, and you've not been able to do that in the same way anymore. Maybe your gift is an encourager and you want to reach out and support one another within the church, but that's been a very difficult thing to do because we've not really been able to, to meet up for a coffee, even just to do simple things together in the same way. We've had to show love to one another in a very different way. So church has been different the last wee while. And of course, right now we're preparing to get back into the swing of some kind of normality where we can meet together. It won't be exactly the same, of course, but we hope to get there over time. But hopefully you have learned and that we have all learned over these last few months as church has been so drastically different. We've learned that none of us are stronger in our Christian life on our own. Hopefully we realise as we've coped with church in this, in this strange way that we are better off with one another. That we are stronger as part of a body rather than on our own. We reject, as we've, we've often said in the past, we reject the idea of what is sometimes called Lone Ranger Christianity, where we don't need the church, we don't need the body of Christ, we don't need other people, it's just me and Jesus all on our own, that'll be fine. We reject that because we recognise what the Bible says and we recognise that in the eyes of God, when his people come together, just like when musical parts come together, it can form something beauti beautiful with a unity amidst diversity. We recognise that when Jesus saved us, he didn't save us to be on our own for an individualistic Christian life. He saved us to be part of a body. And hopefully over these last few months, as we've learned to cope with church life in this strange way, that we can appreciate the importance of being part of that body. And so this day, as you press on with whatever it is you're doing this day or this week, let me ask you this day, who is it in the church that you can maybe be a blessing to? Why is this church stronger with you as a part of it? In what way can you be an encouragement to someone else? Just in the same way that the hand needs the foot and the ear needs the eye and all the rest of it, the way that we all come together. How can you be a blessing to the church of Jesus Christ this day? Who's depending on you to help them this day? For the richness of of the church, for the glory of Jesus Christ, for the unity and blessing of God's people. Hopefully you recognise that we all have a part to play. We all have something to give, but we also are able and encouraged to receive from others. May that be the case for us this week. God bless you.